I have Don and Sharon here. Yes. And this is a very unique situation in that I have a husband and wife that have actually built a light sport aircraft together. Is that true? That's true. We built two of them together. <laughs> two of them? And you're still married? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is uh, one of Randy Slitter's uh, designs, the uh, S19. Correct. How did you first, I don't know, get involved in, with Randy and with this airplane? Well, about seven years ago, here at Arlington, they had an S6, and I uh, ordered the kit then. We built an S6. Then about five years ago here, they had a, a design had me on this one, so I put the money down. And of course, it's ready about a year later than we expected, but it went together really good. No, you just as first the Coyote, of course, is a, a tube and uh, tube fabric, fabric. Uh, aircraft. Yeah. This aircraft is all metal. Yeah. Uh, why go from one to the other? I guess we just wanted to build another one, but yet this is more of a production airplane where the Coyote still has some what I call ultralight mentality, even though it's still an excellent airplane. Yeah, and you can actually buy, uh, build it as a, uh, a light sport and have it so that it's got the big tail and all that stuff and yeah. you know cruise along at 120, 130 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. but, uh, now again, getting back to the construction of this aircraft though, I mean, did you have any qualms about getting into something like this that you'd never taken on before? No, not really, because well, let's face it, our background, we're both retired Boeing. I spent 30 years of aircraft design and engineering. So just naturally, designing for, for 30, 40 years, you want to build a couple. So, so it's just you know, sort of a passion for airplanes. And Sharon worked at Boeing. She was in planning and worked in the, on, in a, out of the factory. So we got a long well, I background. I worked liaison with the mechanics, but I didn't actually do drilling and riveting to where I had to learn how to do that. So. You, you've got your money placed on the aircraft. Randy takes about a year to get you the airplane because he actually just came up with that airplane at that point in time. Mm -hmm. How do you go from, like, how does it arrive at your doorstep? Or you <laughs> go over and pick it up when's the store there? Oh, this is, actually, uh, we live on an island, so it comes in crates. So we got to go pick up the crates from the shipping company. It's got to get on a barge, a barge the island, off the barge into our, our house. Our hangar. Our, we have a hangar. So we live on a little island airstrip with with uh, no stores, no ferry service. It comes across by barge. So we start unpacking and doing inventory and we set up the boards with all the different parts, the little screws and rivets and washers and all that. They're all set up by part number and organized so that we know exactly where to find them. And we just start in uncrate and everything and then he has, he has a, a pretty good manual, though, that goes oh, yeah. from, uh, from from point A to point B oh, on, yes, on, a, on yes, his aircraft. Yes. yes. Good instruction yeah. manual with lots of pictures. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, Sharon does most of the organizing, and she did all the Dremel work, and most all the drilling. I run the Clecos in and out, and she drills. She did riveting, I run the Clecos in and out, and dip the rivets in primer, and she rivets. So you move along pretty good about this time, you know. Then, then she's the quality control expert. No, not good enough. Let's do it over. <laughs> now, where did you build it then? Now, like, what kind of a facilities or what kind of uh, a garage, two-car garage, single-car garage? Or? We live on, we have a hangar in our, in our yard and a hangar in an adjacent lot. So we got two big hangars and plus a heated garage for the winter. So we build it right on the island. Mm -hmm. And what about the island? You have no help. There's really nobody there. So we pretty much just all on our own. Now, was there any special tables or anything you had to build in order to, to, to build the airplane? You made a, a, a work table out of one of the crates, put legs on it with wheels so we could wheel it around inside the building and that we, made it handy. It came with basically a jig. We did the rudder and the tail and the fuselage and we also did the wing on that same table, made a jig and it was just the right size. So we took the shipping crate for the empennage and built that into a, a moving table with wheels and it worked out just great for us. Now, what type of equipment would you need to build this airplane then? I mean, was there anything special? Uh, I imagine you had an air riveter and a, a compressor to big, minimum. Big compressor. Yeah. yeah we riveted, we had oh, we a, lot, through a lot of drills, uh, air drill. Mm -hmm. A lot we of drills. We went through a couple of rivet guns. Yeah. Two Dremels. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you get, we end up getting a with a lot of tools, uh, needle files, uh, uh, nut holders, uh, all kinds of miscellaneous little things. Uh, we've got 400 clecos of each size. Well, the rivnut tool. Rivnut tool, that's another bunch of little tools that you can do without, but I got it, it's better to have them. Mm -hmm. And then we share that now with friends of ours that are building an S19, and so 
they say, oh, we've got the tool that you can use to do that particular job, so we share the tool with our friend. Now, this airplane, though, is so, I don't know, nicely finished off. Did you do the painting and everything on it as well? No. We shipped it off for that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We, we took it across to Anna, of course, on a barge in 30 different pieces. We ran a trailer from a friend of ours and a barge. So just getting it to island and back to transportation was about $1,000. We hit the local auto shop, which the guy was really quite good. Yes. <laughs> so it's a little on island, it's a different story. And then after it was painted, we wrapped everything in blankets and padding and loaded it into the trailer and brought it back to the island and did the final assembly. When you've got this airplane, it's powered with uh, what, a Rotax 912, 100 horse? Yes. What kind of performance do you get out of it for cross country, for uh, stall, for climb rate, that type of thing? It cruises at 5,000 RPM about 110. And it lands probably under 40 indicated, which is probably 45. And with just one person on board, it gets off the ground fast. And the flaps are more effective than that on a 172. I mean, we almost never use full flaps. It comes down like a dream. It, it, it you know, he, the coyote, he, it floated almost forever. But this one comes down more than a Cessna. The flaps are really just about perfect. Now, how far have you gone in it then? I mean, I don't imagine you've just been flying from the island over to the mainland and back. Really not too far. Uh, we go, we've been over 100 miles away yet in this, you know. Well, we just finished it last summer, and then over the winter months, of course the weather is usually so awful, you can't go flying whenever you want to, so we're just kind of getting used to taking it locally. Yeah. We got it here last year, Arlington, with three hours on it. The DAR gave us a 100 mile flight test radius, so, you know, it's I got about 60, 70 hours on it now, probably. But it's mainly just a, a local fun airplane. You know, you get old enough, we don't uh, do a lot of long cross countries anymore. We still fly our 172 for a grocery cart. Oh, so I no see. No stores on the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is the fun machine. Yeah, this is the toy. <laughs> now it sounds to me like you've got other people that you've gotten involved into building these airplanes or get involved with the Rands yeah. uh, line of aircraft. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tech counselor, so I help a lot of other people. But this is the first S19 in the area. It's kit number 14, and now we have eight other S19 builders here in the area. And they're all going to be probably be here Saturday. Most of them will be. So last year we had five S19 builders here, and they'll come take pictures and, and uh, you know and uh, ask questions. A lot of questions. Yeah. I get a lot of phone calls. Yeah. From people. Now this airplane looks like it's an award winner. So tell me that you've walked away with a couple of uh, awards for. It. We did last year. Uh, yeah, reserve grand champion light sport aircraft. This one did. We didn't even ask for it to be judged, but. They did it, and it was a surprise. We we were <laughs> yeah. one, excited about it. Yeah, one of the judges had had done some radio, uh, some engine wiring for it. Because he saw the airplane with all the inspection plates off the seats up, so he knew what the airplane was like. That the things the other judges never see. So he had his insistence. You know, we said, okay, judge it if you want. So he got a bunch of them over here, and he said, show up at the awards ceremony, and it won reserve grand champion. And after looking around Oshkosh and other places. Yeah, it, it probably it probably did deserve it, you know. It, it wouldn't win back there, but for here, it, it certainly uh, certainly certainly came out good for us. And after three years of working, you don't realize that you've done a good job. You know, you get your own worst enemy, you know. And we got two rivets. I put oversized rivets in two places in the whole airplane. Well, I know it. Nobody can even find them. You see, little stuff like that, you know. But we basically built the airplane per print. We made really no structural, aerodynamic, or propulsion changes to it. The only change we made, we extended the step of eight inches, you know. Otherwise, this is the same as a factory built airplane. I think the nice paint job that our painter did really complements the airplane. Now, what type of instrument package do you have in it? Like, it's just a standard instrument package or yes, a glass we, panel? Or? No, we did traditional gauges. We're the old school. Uh, we believe in looking out for other airplanes not spending all your time flipping gauges, you know. But we just a, a very basic panel. Uh, you know, we did add a fuel flow meter because it's a low wing. But, and we put a, a slip skid ball on the, on the uh, right side for the passenger to fly it. We've always done that on our planes. But otherwise, it's just plain basic. Nothing fancy. And how have you found the factory to deal with if you've had any problems or any communication with them? Well, uh, 
when we called them, the factory's been very good, but a second airplane, I know how Rand's thinks. That on a coyote, we made several calls that I realized their mentality, how they think. So now I said, no, no, this is what they really mean. Now this was kit 14. They made a lot of changes after we got our kit. So we had to work some problems out. We had to redo the floorboards and a bunch of things they changed, but nothing that caused any trouble. And plus we're both engineering, you know, it wasn't a problem for us. I get calls from all over in places, guys I've met here. to share information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll stick that on the video then. Thank yeah. you very much yeah. for your time. One more thing, yeah, okay. We're doing a technical forum here two days on fuel system basics. So people attend that and they get my card. I get calls from people around the country on, on and off for design problems. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Nice meeting you.